Hey guys, I know two videos in one day, shocker, after a seven month hiatus. I think that's pretty damn good. So I just want to put a couple disclaimers out. Uh, if you don't know who I am, my name is Laura. I run a Facebook group called Making a Murderer Uncensored. If you can not handle cursing, this is probably not the channel for you um, or the Facebook group for you because I do curse. I do have a foul mouth, especially when it comes to making a murderer and the absolute travesty that went on and still continues to go on. So make sure you, if you're new, make sure you subscribe, hit the little bell so you can get my latest videos. For all my normal sub regular subscribers, just know that I'm back. I promise you I'm back and I won't ever go on a seven month hiatus again. So I don't want to get into making a murder or two yet, <laughs> like details, because I know a lot of people haven't finished watching it yet. And I just don't want to go through the whole thing again. Uh, I don't, don't want to give any spoilers. I have people not watch it. So I'm trying to keep it very friendly. Um, and then someone in my group posted a letter. Uh, I'm sorry, not a letter. An article that Kratz did on the 19th or the 20th. And I gives me more than enough. Um, gives me the perfect avenue to get out my frustration. So the article was done by The Wrap. The article is about, I'm already getting hyped up. The article is nine reasons, I think it was nine or six of reasons why Stephen Avery is guilty that wasn't in Making a Murderer. So because it's long, I'm going to get right down to it. I may sound like I'm reading it because I am reading it. Um, while I was answering it earlier, I had jotted down some notes. So let's get right to it. <clears throat> so number one which I laugh at. Number one, he writes, Avery's past incident with a cat was not goofing around. He soaked his cat in gasoline or oil and put it on a fire to watch it suffer. Okay, we all agree. Kratz, you, on the other hand, completely fucking violated your own code of ethics, the legal code of ethics, you took advantage of a domestic violence victim who trusted you. And just like you say that he didn't do it because he was goofing around, you didn't do that because, why? Um, because you did do it. And you did it because you were a self-righteous, self-serving piece of low-life white trash, a fucking domestic violence victim who came to you because she needed help. Because you were the fucking DA, not some prize who needed phone sex. You were the DA. Stephen Avery also did that when he was a teenager. He was 17 years old, and you're using it against him 30 years later. Kratz, you did that eight years ago, literally. And Stephen was a kid. You, on the other hand, were a grown man. You were a father, you were married. You were a DA. He was a fucking low-life, you know, troublemaker who wasn't even really a troublemaker, but he was some, you know, low-life kid from an, you know, poor, kind of poor family, um, or they seemed poor, and you're supposed to be this $350,000 a year hotshot DA who won the Stephen Avery case. Believe me, Kratz, you're far worse than he is. Far worse. And it's absolutely sickening that you're holding that against him and that makes him guilty. What the fuck does that make you? His was 30 years ago. Yours was eight. He, what you did was actually worse. So that was number one. I told you I'd get intense. Number two, Avery targeted Teresa. <clears throat> Bullshit. On October 31st at 8.12 a.m., he called Auto Trader Magazine and asked them to send that same girl who was here last time. On October 10th, Teresa had been to the Avery property when Steve answered the door just wearing a towel. I, correct me if I'm wrong, and I might be wrong, I don't ever remember in making a murder one, the date of October 10th being said. What I do know is that in Making a Murderer 2, Kathleen Zellner said October 10th. I might be wrong. Maybe it was said in Making a Murderer 1. I don't buy it, though. I, I don't remember. There's a couple things I don't remember. 
I'm pretty sure I'm right, but if I'm wrong, please correct me. Um, she said that she would not go back because she was scared of him. Obviously, he wrote in parentheses. Avery used a fake name and a fake number, his sisters giving those to the auto trader receptionist to trick Teresa into coming. Okay, this is completely fabricated story. And how do I know? Let me just say, I apologize that I could not find it. I had it. I've spoken about it before. I put it on a video. I believe the proof is in the video, but honestly, I have 105 videos. I didn't feel like going through each and every one of them. Um, I'm going to mark my videos better, though. And, but how do I know it's fabricated? Because this is the exact thing that was said by one of Chuck's co-workers, not Teresa, Chuck's. It was it was documented um it was like two years ago and again i can't remember when it was but somebody had written or it's in the transcript or it's in the police I, I think it's in one of the police reports actually that if anyone wants to go find it be my guest but i remember it specifically and i did a video on it um teresa never once said she was afraid to go back there as a matter of fact she laughed that avery came to the door in a towel probably because he just got out of a shower um, and uh, I mean, the man spent 18 fucking years in jail. Maybe he wanted to get some. Do I think he raped her to get it? Absolutely not. And there's not even evidence to back that up, but I'm jumping ahead. So let's not go there. Um, but on the other hand, some very respectful individuals don't want to work with you, Kratz, because you talked about their breast size. You talked about what you were going to do to strippers in Vegas you um and how you were such the prize stephen avery has never been a pompous narcissistic ass like you have um as a matter of fact the board of ethics fined you twenty five thousand dollars and you didn't pay because you were broke you cried them a river about how you couldn't afford it at least when stephen got in trouble false or not he did his time he paid his fines so again, Kratz, you are 10 times fucking worse than Stephen Avery. Um, number three, you wrote Teresa's phone, camera. I love this one, by the way. Teresa's phone, camera, and PDA were found 20 feet from the Avery door, burned in his barrel. Why the documentary not tell the viewers the contents of her purse were in his burn barrel, just north of the front door of the trailer. This is literally almost as funny as you being the prize for women. Avery, in your opinion, must be the smartest motherfucker and the dumbest motherfucker all at the same time. Um, Steven and Brendan were so good, I mean so fucking good, that they were able to clean up the entire murder, leave not one ounce of DNA in the trailer, leave not one hair, not one mark on the bedpost, not one anything in the trailer. Not a drop of blood, not a hair, nothing. And they were smart enough to burn her, shoot her in the garage, which means they had to carry her. And there was not one hair, one piece of clothing, you know, because you just cut her hair, you ripped her clothes, you raped her, all this other stuff. Nothing from the trailer to the garage. Um, and nothing in the trailer. So they cleaned it so fucking well that nothing was there, no evidence. And when she was fighting for her life being carried to the garage after they cut, raped, and killed her or whatever, they were so fucking nice that they took her camera before they put it in the burn barrel, of course, and they took out the memory card and put it in the back of her car. How fucking nice are they? They must be the sweetest rapist killers, horrible people I've ever seen in the world. But they wanted to make sure that the picture from her, her um, memory card from her camera was in her back seat, So her family had her pictures. Okay. I'm not even going to say anything more on that. That's also in a video previously. Um, yet they were dumb enough to leave all her belongings right in plain view. Right in plain view. So close to the edge. So in one hand, they're fucking geniuses. And in the other hand, they're the dumbest motherfuckers ever. Kratz, you've got to be fucking kidding me. 
please, and I beg you, stop insulting our intelligence like that. Maybe this shit goes with some fucking idiots. Maybe this logic goes with people that believe your bullshit, like Dan O'Donnell and Rich Donovan. Maybe that kind of logic goes with them. And from this New York City gal and half the world that is obsessed with making a murderer, um, who, let me go above and beyond that, who have actually read the documents, who have actually read the case files and read transcripts. I can't say that everybody's seen the transcripts because I'll be honest, I haven't read every single detail of them, but I have read most of them. Um, but maybe you can fool old people, Wisconsin, but you're not fooling me. I had me and half the world had you pegged from day one. But then when you give articles like this, you just, you make yourself look like the biggest fucking liar ever. So I could spend an hour going through this, but all I'm going to tell you, Kratz, please stop insulting our intelligence because you are just dumb. You are the dumbest motherfucker I've ever met. The way you change things and the way you're putting shit together, which isn't even true. So I could go on, but let's move on. Number four. While in prison, Avery told another inmate of his intent to build a torture chamber so he could rape, torture, and kill young women when he was released. Bullshit. He even drew a diagram. Another inmate was told by Avery that the way to get rid of a body is to burn it. He destroys DNA. Inmates in max security prisons um, Kratz, are the most honest, most reliable motherfuckers that I have ever known. Why don't we just let everyone out that's in a max security prison? Because they got there because they're honest and reliable people. Get the fuck out of here. You are such an asshole, Kratz. And to go one step above that, you planted these people there. Or somebody planted these people there to get um, him to say stupid shit like that. Or to get him to do dumb stuff. I mean, again, stop insulting my intelligence with your bullshit. Number five. Um, the victim's bones in the fire pit were intertwined. Oh, by the way, let me back up for a second. Why would Kratz or somebody plant? And why would those guys? Because I know a lot of you guilters are fucking clueless and can't put two and two together. So I'm going to go one step further and say that the reason why these people lied is because Kratz and whoever else, I'm not just saying Kratz, but anybody, any cop, whoever it is, decided to um, offer them leniency. If you can get Stephen Avery to say this and this, we'll knock 10 years off your time. That's what they do. That is how our law works. Cops do it every day, especially if they want to catch like a big drug dealer they will get the little drug deal and say, we'll let you off. It's called plea bargaining. Um, and it's time served. So that is completely like X'd out. Unless you just think everyone in a max security prison is reliable and honest. Number five. Um, the victim's bones in the fire pit were intertwined with steel belts left over from the car tires Avery threw on the fire to burn as described by Dassey. That was where her bones were burned. A, um, explanation point, no less. Suggesting that human bones found elsewhere and never identified as Teresa's were from this murder was never established. Well, okay. I can't argue that the other bones were never um, identified as Teresa's because nobody fucking tested them. Um, the defense sucked. That's why. Um, they were working with you, Kratz, instead of working for Avery. I know they like to give the impression they were working for Avery, but they weren't. They were working with you. That's why they did nothing. Um, they didn't conduct their own testing. They believed Avery was guilty and just defended him because they wanted $240,000. Um, none of the fucking bones were identified as Teresa's. None of them. How do I know this? Because your letter in which you were shocked as fuck that their bones were even a somewhat match to Teresa's. You couldn't believe it. That it was like, you. Even, I forgot exactly how you wrote it. Again, another video I did. Um, and I apologize that I couldn't find the letter. But there's a letter that Kratz wrote to the... I don't know who he read it, read it to. Coroner or... 
probably Sherry fucking Colhane, I don't remember. But he was shocked as fuck that these bones even matched slightly. Um, I don't, I really don't know why um, the defense did nothing. My only conclusion is that they were working with Kratz and they believed he was guilty from day one. And that's just the way it is. Um, now, another thing is, I don't remember in Making a Murder on One, there was ever any mention of dismemberment. Again, just like the other thing, I could be wrong. I could just not remember because it was two years ago that I actually researched everything. But I am almost positive there was never a mention of dismemberment. Well, in this article, now Kratz is saying how, you know, th that she was cut, her bones were cut and dismembered. Um, you wouldn't even let a coroner on site. You cut the coroner out. You had no CSI team, which is fucking unheard of. Like, who doesn't have a CSI team in a crime scene? Oh, wait, I forgot. You had Ryan. Ryan Hillegas was your CSI team as he planted evidence or gave you evidence because the boyfriend, and even though I knew he was involved in the cover-up and I never thought he was the murderer, um, the boyfriend or the ex-boyfriend of the girl who's dead wouldn't possibly be a suspect um, couldn't possibly, like, even though he got in a voicemail and everything, fuck, there's no way he's a suspect. Really, Kratz? Again, please stop insulting my intelligence. Um, number five. Also found the fire pit was Teresa's, oh, this is where he goes into his membermen. Also found in the fire pit was Teresa's tooth, one tooth, by the way. Um, a rivet from the Daisy Fuentes jeans she was wearing that day. And the tools used by Avery to chop up her bones during the fire. Again, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't ever remember a one mention of dismemberment or that they chopped her up. So what's interesting, though, is that Kratz is saying, and for all you guilters who think you know it all, um, on one hand, he's saying that those other bones were not Teresa's and were never tested for Teresa. However, what he's referring to as chop up her bones, those are the ones in the far barrel, according to MAM2. That wasn't, from what I remember, again, I only watched it one time around, but from what I remember, it wasn't about the bones near Avery. It was about the other bones. The bones that were in that Kratz just said in question three or statement three that they were never tested and they were not hers. So which is it, Kratz? But he sure throws in this dismemberment now. Um, and what I've also found interesting, and I did do some research on this. So they found a piece of one tooth. Teeth do not burn. <clears throat> um, I double-checked Kratz's, uh, not Kratz, bleh. Zellner's expert said, like, your back doesn't burn, which I'm trying to think, and he's actually kind of right, because if you burn an animal, the vertebrae is always there. That's how they know what animal it is. Um, and so the fact that they found one piece of a tooth, but yet a metal rivet survived? Get the fuck out of here, Kretz. That's never going to happen. You have one tooth because you found her fucking body. That's why you had one tooth. I, I don't even want to think what you guys did to her. I, I honestly don't even want to think about it. After you found her, hopefully she was dead already. Um, but the fact that you're like now changing your story to match Zellner's but yet still using it as yours, you're a sick fucking human being. So let me move on. Number six. Phone records show three calls to Avery to Teresa's cell phone on October 31st. One at 2.24, one at 2.35. Both calls Avery uses the 67 feature to Teresa doesn't know it's him. Both place before she arrives. Then one last call at 4.35 without his 67 feature. Avery first believes he can simply say that she never showed up. Um, she tries to establish the alibi after she's already been there. Hence for the 435 call. Yes, let's look at the phone records, Kratz. You stupid fuck. You didn't even use real phone records. 
you fabricated them and again i covered this in a video in 2016 and i proved your phone records fake i even called a fucking phone company i worked for at&t for years what you presented and what was going around the internet was not phone records those were not official phone records they were bullshit phone records they were the ones that you get from your bill which were total bullshit you never once subpoenaed proper records why Kratz, because you wanted to change it don't fucking even tell me differently and again there's a video about this um you purposely did not subpoena records and the dumb fucks buting and strang didn't even question it the witnesses the people that you called in were fucking nobodies again i was a manager for at&t the people that you fucking called in you called in some retail clerk who works the front um, in like some local store that you probably were sexting with and you called in somebody someone from I forgot the department now but she was not someone that could do what you wanted it to do and again dipshit one and two didn't even question it you know they gave bullshit questions but I'm telling you they were working with you not for Avery and now they're all you know blah blah go Zellner fuck you you two did nothing but I'm not even going to go off there. Let's get back to Kratz. So your fucking phone records are bullshit. Um, honestly, though, between the patheticness and everything that's been done, you should be disbarred. But then again, I think you were disbarred. And honestly, Strang and Buting, they are slightly better, but not much better than Kaczynski. If my instinct is right that they were working with you all along. But that's neither here nor there. Number eight, um, Avery's DNA, not blood, was on the victim's hood latch under the hood in her hidden SUV. The SUV was at the crime lab since 11-5. Um, how did his DNA get under the hood if Avery never touched her car? Do the cops have a vial of Avery sweat to plant under the hood? Are you a fucking retard, Kratz? Like, who buys this shit? First of all, um, this is not a spoiler, but it kind of is in episode nine. You know how I always said, and a lot of you have always said that that car was taken into custody on the four, the third, um, or the, yeah, I think it was the third that Colvin made that call. Well, now we know where the car was because Colvin, um, was told by one of Scott Taddett's friends where that was if you haven't seen make it a murder i don't mean spoil it but i've already discussed this in previous videos and a lot other so have others but i was really honed in on this fucking um that colburn and the paperwork and again i have a video for it and i can't find it but there's paperwork that shows that car was in custody on the third and that she was missing so the fact that um avery i'm sorry not avery that kratz you're gonna insult us again with this bullshit um the reason why they already had the car on the third Ta scott Todd, i lost my train of thought scott Todd's friend told them that they he saw the car five minutes later he walks into a gas station and he sees colburn and he tells colburn exactly where the car is wow and then Colburn happens to call it in. So even though I knew all this, I didn't know how it tied together. I didn't know where Colburn found the car, why Colburn found the car. Like, was he just driving down the road? Well, we know now that this guy who Scott Tadich couldn't be bothered with, um, told him via text, and it was proven via text, um, Zellner covers it on, I think it's episode nine, eight, nine or 10 and the other thing she covers which i'm not going to get too into is that that trailer was 10 feet away from scott tadich's trailer and then the new house they bought it was like 10 feet the other way something like that it's in one of the episodes but that's neither handle there so let me get back to this so he you claim that he has this you know sweat dna one and there's a video for this I made as well. You had DNA from his fucking balls. You can't get any better DNA than that. You also had DNA from his toothbrush. You had access to his entire fucking house. 
he was not a clean person. You can get DNA from him blowing his fucking nose or wiping his ass in jail or wherever. It's a million places you can get DNA. So again, insulting my fucking intelligence. Now, um, if he had DNA just from raising the hood, why was there no DNA in the door handles? Originally, people said... Oh, he had gloves on. Well, guess not. Did he just take them off of the hood latch? And there was never any DNA on the top of the hood latch. There was only DNA under the hood latch. How is that even fucking possible? There was no DNA on around it. It was only on that one part. None in the handles, none inside the car. There was blood inside the car, but they never found DNA in the seats. He wasn't sweating, nothing. I covered this in the first video. Nothing. So if you, a car on the property of the killer would be taken into custody. Like if you had a legit crime scene, you're saying that, you know, you only knew where to look for the, um, the underneath the hood latch because Brendan told you bullshit. If you would have done a proper investigation or a proper CSI team, when the car was taken, I mean, fuck, you had like, what, 200 FBI agents there? When that happened, all you had to do was fucking um, have a proper team there. They would have inspected the entire car, inside and out, hood latches. And that's another thing. I remember distinctly an episode in the first Making a Murderer that you specifically said that when you found the car, there was something under the hood that was detached. A proper CSI and crime scene t team would have then tested the hood latch for DNA. But you're a fucking liar. Um, you never tested it for DNA because you never had a crime scene because everything about this case was a fucking lie right out of your mouth and part of your imagination. So let me move on to the final one, which is number nine. A ballistic said that the bullet found in the garage was fired by Avery's rifle which was in police evidence locker since 11-6. If the cops planted the bullet, how did they get one fired from his gun? This rifle hanging over Avery's bed is the source of the bullet found in the garage with Teresa's DNA on it. The bullet had to be fired before 11-5. Did the cops borrow his gun, fire a bullet, recover the bullet before planting the SUV, then hang on the bullet for four months in case I need to plan it four months later. Oh my God, stop insulting my fucking intelligence, you fat fuck. The gun was shot many times. There's casings all over that fucking place. There's bullets all over that fucking place. How did he get your, her DNA on it? Well, let's see. You had a fucking pap smear. You had a toothbrush. Ryan gave you a fucking underwear. Gee, where would you get this possible DNA from? You are such an asshole. Um, I mean, you can get the DNA from that, or the more I think about it, maybe you were sitting there fucking jerking off to it, Kratz. Um, did you rub your dick on there the same way you rub DNA on there? Because you really, I mean, the fact that you can even ask questions like that. Well, guess what, fucker? Now you have someone like me who can answer every single one of them and fight you every single, every step of the way. Anytime you want to go head-to-head, -head, Kratz, contact me because I will make you look like the little fucking penis that you have. That is how I will make you look. You are pathetic and your answers are pathetic and the way you speak is pathetic. You are supposed to be a lawyer. Me? It doesn't matter how I speak. I'm an IT support for fucking um, IT support. And I grew up, born and bred in New York City. It doesn't fucking matter how I talk. I'm nobody. You're supposed to be a respected lawyer who took a fucking oath. Pathetic. Absolutely fucking pathetic. So... That is, I had to get that off my chest. I know this video went way longer than most of my videos and I'm like sweating to death because um, it's hot and cold. So don't forget to subscribe. I hope you guys like my half hour video. Um, I will do another one tomorrow when I get out of work and I hope you guys have a great night again. Subscribe. Don't forget, make it a murder uncensored and another video coming tomorrow. Okay. Have a great night. Peace.